The following is a presentation of TFNN. Mindful Living with Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Namaste, everybody. It's Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien, and welcome to Mindful Living. We want to help you get healthy so that you can feel good and live life to the fullest every single day. That is our mission, our positive intention. And we are joined today by a very inspiring individual, Mr. John Templeton, who's the co-founder of Footprints Beachside Recovery Center on Treasure Island, Florida. John has um, an amazing story to tell. It's one of tragedy and at the same time of great hope. So John, thanks for being here. Ali, thank you very much. Tom, thank you for having me. Welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Of Glad course. To be here. Of course. So you are the co-founder of this recovery center, Footprints Beachside, right here in Treasure Island. I am. And uh, how did you? How did that come about for you? You know, Ali, I don't. When I was a, a high school senior, um, I the last thing I thought about was being a, a co-founder of a drug and alcohol treatment center. I really didn't even know what that was. Um, but it's through my own uh, personal experience that it's actually become a, a great passion for me is, is being um, involved pretty hands-on as well with people uh, in recovery from substance abuse and addiction. And uh, my story led my, my, my uh, decisions in life and my choices and my paths led me to this journey that I'm on right now, helping the other, those, those others in recovery um, because I'd been down that same road myself and I had, I had felt uh, the feelings of hopelessness and despair and, and, and tragedy and uh, I, I began you know drinking uh, at 15 years old and, and experimenting in high school and I just thought that you know everybody does this when they're younger and and it's hard to be uh, objective or mindful that you're uh, you're getting out of control and, and I think a lot of people think that yeah totally it's because so where's the line yeah it's, 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 sure you know sure and, and you know it's so uh, prevalent in our you know in our society it now is. Of prescription pills and mm -hmm. um you know and, and alcohol seemed to be like the key to to key to fun it was uh you know it made this little dance a little more fun at the time and but um as a 19 year old college sophomore life seemed to be perfect i was at the university of south florida studying business and uh i was really just looking forward to you know a, a wonderful future and but i uh but i made a terrible choice that um you know, I'd made the decision to drink and drive, which mm -hmm. I'd made before, and, um, you know, thinking really I was only risking getting that infamous DUI, but um, my life changed significantly on no November 23rd, 2002, when I woke up after going out with a night of friends, a Friday before Thanksgiving, actually, and I woke up, and I was handcuffed to a hospital gurney in St. Joseph's Hospital, Wow! being surrounded by a bunch of state troopers, and... Um, and that, that fun that was I experienced for three hours was long gone. And I knew, I didn't know what happened, Allie, mm -hmm. but I knew that my life had significantly changed that night um, when I just saw the state trooper with his horrific look on his face walk up to my hospital bed. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't remember anything, I actually blacked out, but I, re I can remember everything from this point on because this changed the entire direction of my life. And Corporal, Corporal Burke, the state trooper, had this horrific look on his face like he wished he never had to do this again you know in his whole career he's done this one too many times and he began to tell me that um, I was responsible for a fatality accident mm. and that I was there handcuffed because I made a decision to drink and drive which took the life of another human being and I felt like my whole life was just was over I all I could do was sit there and cry and just say I'm mm. sorry and I've never been more ashamed and more sorry for for anything in my life and I realized the decision that I made was permanent mm -hmm. and that I had to deal with these consequences and another family was going to go through this tragic, horrible situation and um, unfortunately these, these accidents happen too prevalent in our society and um, instead of planning a wedding, uh, this young girl, her name was Julie Buckner, her parents had to come home and plan a funeral. Uh. That's intense. It is so intense. And and as you say, you know, it, it happens. I mean... It can happen it, to anyone. It can. That's the, 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 you know, it, the, the, you know it, First off, we really appreciate you telling the story because that is not easy. And 
uh, and what you've done, as you're, you're going to tell us, is, is amazing. Yeah. You know, because, you know, uh, the bottom line is that this drink and drive, and, and it's, it's in society, it's everywhere. And it listen, I'm not even immune from it. I mean, I, I try to take cabs all the time, but even whether it's a beer or two beers, and that you know, are you gonna? Are you, and it's it's about hurting someone else. Yeah, there's no absolutely. there are no two ways Being about that. It's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. And it's important that you're telling the story because you know when we had Connie Pappas on, who um, was involved oh, in. Oh, put me right back no, on my tracks. No, seriously, it's, it's, no. It, it, her it, it, biggest it, point was we have to communicate, and when people hear these stories, you know, both parents and children, it helps us be more aware and hopefully make make better choices. So going back to that point, then. What did you do? What what happened after that night? You, you know, Ali and I appreciate Tom as well, because um, I do feel it's my obligation. I've I've been through that, and and I'm, you know, I strive to prevent these type of tragedies from happening because I really believe that they are preventable. Mm -hmm. Every single drinking and driving sure. accident, obviously, is preventable. Right. Right. And um, laying in the hospital bed was the most painful experience of my life. And um, to say that it was a life-altering experience is is definitely an understatement. Um, but I remember just. You know, laying in that bed and just you know crying and realizing what a f what a family has to go through. And my mom came up to the hospital. My dad came up there, and my mom had to get wheelchaired in because she fainted in the lobby. And I saw the pain that I went through my, with my family. I can't even imagine, right. you know, what what I had, what I had done and uh, uh, what this other family went through because of my. It's it's really a selfish choice. Mm -hmm. It's a selfish choice, and it's um it's it's terrible that you know people make that. But um. I believe that uh, addiction and, and substance abuse is, is one of the uh, most prevalent, uh, actually it's a, one of the biggest health crises of our, our generation right sure. now. Mm -hmm. Over 23 mer uh, million Americans suffer from uh, addiction or, or, or chemical dependency and mm -hmm. unfortunately only 11% actually ever get treatment. Because it's almost acceptable. I mean, there's, there's not, I, I, I'm not saying it should be acceptable because it shouldn't, but what seems to happen in society, right, the drinking thing has been going on forever. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like uh, the bar, the advertising. I mean, mm -hmm. it's cool to drink, right? Sure, it's sexy. The, the, it's glad they glamorize the it. Sure, you, you know, know. The, the the pill thing, prescription drug is like the most disgusting thing in the world because these poor kids that are that are growing up. I grew up in the drug culture, and I feel like that we were lucky because we grew up in a drug culture versus these kids right now. They they're growing up in a pill culture and they think it's alright because it's always in the cabinets and they don't realize they're taking things that are like 8,000 times more powerful than anyone took in the 60s. Yeah. Not, not even close. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and you're done. You know, you, so you're starting with those, those opiates and you're done. Yeah, and these opiate-based, uh, you know, they're synthesized in a laboratory but it's essentially, it's, it's heroin in a little itty bitty pill that you can actually That's get intense. a lot more heroin right. in, in a p little pill bottle than you can't go out on the street and buy six, sure. seven bags of, of heroin right. and it's yeah. lethal. That oftentimes says it's okay because your doctor gave this to your mom and it your daddy. Is. Right, yeah. right. But so you yourself, so you you were an addict or c c considering yourself engaging too much at that time. Absolutely, without uh, a question. Did you have to go to jail after the accident? Uh, Ali, I, I did. In fact, I was facing, you know, 15 years in prison. I, w I w you know, I woke up that Friday, November 23rd, as a uh, University of South Florida college student, and I woke up Saturday morning. You know, John Templeton was on every single news station. Actually, my bond hearing was on the news. I was this guy mm -hmm. that uh, my life seemed so perfect and normal. Um, you know, I was in college, and my parents were still together, and everything was just seemed so right. perfect on the exterior. But right. I was, you know, abusing, you know, the most common drug in our society is alcohol, sure. and um, it wasn't uh, the only reason I'm actually still here. This was uh, almost 12 years ago, and, and I was looking. I, if I had gotten what I deserved, I'd be getting out of jail in the year 2017. And okay. I was blessed with earth, earthly redemption from the very start from uh, Julie Buckner's family. Mm -hmm. um, her sister actually reached out while I was laying in the hospital bed, and mm -hmm. this young girl was a stranger. She was in the wrong place, wrong time when I made that horrible choice. Mm -hmm. And her sister actually... I shared this last night when I spoke to a, a, a youth group of, of young girls. Um, it's a diversion program. But um, I actually remember the state trooper in front of me getting a phone call and hanging up and looking at me and said, the victim's sister just identified you know, her sister, and I just cringed. Mm -hmm. And he said, but she just called to see how the young man's doing. She hopes that two young lives aren't ruined. And, and I think that's where the little bit of healing that's that I powerful. needed started. Yeah. I, I don't know how, what direction my life would have came. Right. right. Right, because how do you cope with something like that? I know? don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was in the very bottom of the pit. It, it, it's been a long climb out. Sure. Um, and it's it's been, you know, uh, it takes a village to, to raise a child, and I really feel like I, I was surrounded by a, a village of just supportive, super um, 
forgiving, um, you know, amazing people that actually got in my, in my corner and actually, you know, told me that I'm still good enough and that I can, you know, that I can still be a good person. I felt like I didn't deserve anything. And well, I'll tell you, I, you know, we just met folks, okay, and I could see his spirit as soon as he, people saw the spirit. You, your, your spirit's amazing. And, and thank Care God, thank God someone, they seen it along the way. I feel very way, blessed. You know? right. Because we've, we've seen in society, people do make those mistakes over and over. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what really, you know, I'm sure you, you talk about that too. That, Absolutely. That's yeah. serious business. It I mean, there's, there's been many mistakes that are made and, and we all make mistakes. Right. You know, uh, but you start making them over and over again. Well, that's more than a mistake at yeah. that point. Yeah, you have to learn that's from absolutely. your mistakes. Mistake. That's a, absolutely. Yeah. You have and, to learn. And addiction is, is um, continued use despite negative consequences. So did you okay. lose a job because of drinking? Did you lose I a see. family? Right. Or do you keep drinking? And right. that's, right. you know, with, it, it's compulsion and loss of control. And um, Where is the, you know, the drinking deal? Uh, you know, I picture this. I grew up in South Boston. And South I Boston. Tell. In, so, <laughs> in South Boston growing up, okay, this is amazing, okay? There were bars literally on every corner. Well, on every corner, there was almost four bars. This is, this, 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 this is crazy. What would happen, the, I only had one job in my life. When I got out of the Marines, I worked for the water department. Um, and it was an on off job, right? <laughs> they put water on and off. These guys, so I'm 19. I get, out, hard. I get out when I'm 19. So it was a joke. But I get out when I'm 19. And so I, I show up at the job, and what ends up happening, I, I say, okay, what do we do? You get this job, you put it on and off. Well, we jump in the truck, and where do we go first to the bar? <laughs> okay, now, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm looking at these guys, I'm saying, what are you doing at the bar? She says, oh, we're going to have some drinks first. Now, I didn't drink then at all. So I said, drink? What are these guys doing, man? <laughs> right? Bang, so they're hitting them down. And folks, I'm not, I'm, listen, every big city was like this then. Okay, this is not <laughs> anything against a big city. But that was the M.O. I only lost to this seven months. I said, I gotta get out of here. Sure. Because it, 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 it was insane. It was zero on a track, heading in a direction. Well, I, I, I had already fun. seen, growing up in South Boston, you, you see the alcoholism. Yeah. Okay, I've seen it, it, it. And I always remember saying, no, I'm not gonna go. It, but what I've seen, the reason why my question is here, what I've seen, even in my own family, we have a huge family, you see some people that can drink, mm -hmm. right? And let's drink it just as much as anyone else. Right. And then other people that can't drink, it's like, okay, how did, how, where is that? Where is the difference? You know some people I mean? can have a glass of wine with dinner. And, sure. And a couple of my uncles, they, they turn around and they drink and they never drove. Mm -hmm. And they, they, one of them said to me, I couldn't get a car. Why would I want to get a car? Now, you could do that in the city, you know. <laughs> Because you can take a cow. Well, yeah. you just, well, they'd walk. I mean, these, you know, they're, they're at the bar, man. They're drinking and walking. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. you can kind of look at you can look at the correlation between somebody that um, they have their smoker cigarettes yeah. and yeah. Um, uh, they have lung cancer. Right. Well, somebody that's just dependent and not addictive. So yes. They said, listen, you got lung cancer. You need to quit. Right. You know, they can actually quit. They were, yeah, they were physically dependent. But yes. same thing with addiction. If somebody, you know, they they says, hey, you're getting, you know, liver cancer. You're you're drinking way too much. You know, your wife started getting, oh, okay, I'll slow down. Stop. Those that can't stop to cross that threshold, yeah. they're not going to be able to stop on their own. And they right. Need, they right. need help. That's but right. it is. But but Tom, like you said, it, it is. Um, I, I look at my family, and you can almost look at it, it's a it's a cult, cultural thing. Whether you're Irish, Italian, yeah. Polish, oh, yeah. Russian, no, we all no, drink. No and, doubt. And sure. And, yeah. and I, you know, I, I know I have a lot of family members and and stories from Scotland of getting in fights and sure. beer drinking. You almost look at it as a masculine. Right. Um, you know, it, it was kind of a, uh, a misperception. But you know, this is what tough guys do. We drink hard. We, yeah. You know, and, and it's right. and it's not. And that's not the guy I want to be today. You know. No, that was no, the last, for sure. That was the last drink I ever had. Was the night Good of that. That's what I was going to ask you. That's so that huge. night, because it really, this is an event that could send your life in one of two directions. You know, either complete utter despair, or somebody who goes through a really difficult mm -hmm. experience like this could be driven back to addiction. You know, to just cover the pain, which a, a lot of people sure. do. That's one reason a lot of people, you know, right? They do coping, sure. Yeah, sure, coping mechanisms. Yeah. But so that's why I asked if you went to jail because I, I oh, wondered yeah. what it was. No, I wondered what it was that helped you make that decision. Hey, I'm not drinking anymore. You know. Um, Allie, I didn't. I, I didn't know if I was ever going to drink again. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that I didn't want to. I knew that I caused so much pain, and I know that I had to look deep inside me and say, "John, I don't want to be this guy anymore. I don't like who I just became." And um, yeah, there was a lot of just overwhelming guilt and, and, and just and sorrow in my life for a long, long time and depression. Sure. But when I bonded out of jail, I had a actually he's a uh, now he's a college basketball coach who I'll keep anonymous. But um, he told me his story. He used to coach me that. Um, you know his his life was almost ruined for because of you know alcoholism and, and that he was sober now so and um, it's everywhere no it is and, and, and it's it is it but it i is. did but i did go Every to jail briefly too so yeah. i did go to jail briefly and it was only for uh, nine months because of forgiveness. Well, we are so grateful you're here we're going to be back with more from john templeton and his recovery center on treasure island so stay with us we'll be back with more mindful living
In Quiet Markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can't use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Yesterday's goal. On. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Mindful Living with Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. Welcome back to Mindful Living, everybody. We're here with John Templeton, co-founder of Footprints Beachside Recovery Center, who's sharing his amazing story of tragedy, but at the same time, hope. So, John, you went through an awful experience, and we've been talking about how, you know, you, you feel you were saved. You've been given a second chance at no life, and you have, you, it's determined your life mission. So, you've, you've created this recovery center, and tell us more about uh, the work that's going on there. I appreciate that. Um... You know, when I think when when s we all have our our stuff that we carry, and and mine was you know it was a dir direct result of my choice, and I and I own it, and I know that. But um, I think when something like that happens, you do a lot of search, and you just and you try to find some sort of purpose uh, and something that you can really do to to make a positive impact. And um, it was quite a long road. Um, you know, I I I felt like my only way to give back was to go in front of schools, and and that was part of my my sentence was you know if you're not going to get along prison sense, John, we want you to speak and, and because yes. Julie can't walk to the door and tell you their story. Right. You know, you know, you're the one that did this and you're gonna you know, you're gonna try to try sure. to make something positive happen and turn this message mess into a message and right. um, how did that feel when you started going and telling your story? How it was scary. Yeah, yeah it's it was intim at first it was very intimidating. I mean I couldn't tell the story. My first time ever telling the story was at North Northside Christian and I'll never forget and I remember Julie's sister got up 
and she told this beautiful story about oh, her wow. sister. And then she said, I want to bring John up here. And then she gave, she hugged me before I spoke. She, she says, what a beautiful person she said, this person She is. said, you're going to do great, honey. And I got up and I just cried. Oh, yeah. man. I just cried and I cried. And, and, um, so you guys are obviously still in touch today. We are. We are. Um, How are they dealing? How are they coping? You know, I, I, I know that... Um, Although they forgave, it doesn't take the pain away, and that's right. that's a deep pain that right. a, a parent should never ever um, uh, feel. But I'm sure they're going to be proud of you too, though. You and, know, and, and, you know, there's there's. I agree, the, the loss is a loss, but it's pretty amazing what you've done. You know, I try to think if somebody did this to my sister, I don't know if I would forgive, but right. I would want I want to react the same way I would want that guy to react. Yes. And, and it had to change. It, it had to change me as a person forever. And, right. Talk uh, about nonviolence. You know, I mean, yeah, if you look at know. Gandhi's example, I mean, right. you know, if you look at Julie's family and how and love and, and yeah, love yeah, and yeah, yeah, you which know, is beautiful. It yeah, is, making it, yeah. you know, it's it's definitely right. affected the change in you. Their their, fir their first uh, way that they reached out was my father. I'm John Jr. and and my father went home that that after seeing me in uh, uh, locked up at, at the hospital. My dad went home and got a same call from that same state trooper that very night, okay. and it was. And he said, um, "I want Julie's father wants you to call him." I don't know how my dad was able to call. Yes. Long story short, when my dad called the man, he started comforting my dad on the other phone. They were strangers whose worlds were collided because of my choice. And he and he just said, "I have a junior also," and he's like, and I he's cr cr crying. He said, "I just want your son to know that I forgive him, and we're praying for you and your wife." He said to my dad. Wow. So that the Gosh. healing really began there. Right. I mean, our whole family was. Uh, uh, the whole context of our family was really destroyed, and, and um, the healing began there. And, but um, how long did it take before you decided you would open a recovery center? <laughs> you know, it, I, it just kind of happened organically. I was able, to, you know, I was fortunate enough. I mean, I had a, you know, uh, I went to jail. I turned 21 in a Florida State prison. You know, wow. I thought my 21st birthday would be with be with a lot of alcohol, and right. And I actually turned 21 in a state prison, and. Um, I was released, uh, fortunately, um, you know, less than a year uh, later, and I was on house arrest, and, and I had to, you know, I, I had to begin to put the pieces of my life back together, and, and just, I was searching, and, and I did find a lot of peace, though, when I would go and tell my story, mm -hmm. and yes. um, I would always occasionally have, you know, one or two people, kids that come up and said, you know, my mom was killed by a drunk driver, and my mom's, and my dad's in jail for that, and, and I never wow. realized that I wouldn't be actually able to make an impact and, and right. talk to schools before the prom, and, and you know, for me, it was so therapeutic and healing. Oh, that's smart. And for Before other the people. Prom, the yeah. drinking. Yeah, Very, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it, it's just a testament to how healing communication is. No doubt. Okay, and that's so such a source of pain where we're holding all this in or ashamed for some reason to share who we are, what we've experienced. For and sure. When so many of us are so alike. Yeah, so It's so true. It's yeah. so true. I know we were looking around, driving around, looking how everybody's different. But you know, we all just want to be happy and feel the sense of purpose. It's and, true. And feel belonging. And it's true. Down deep inside, we're the same. Mm -hmm. So when people come to your center, right, how do they get there? You know, And what do you do? We're a... We're a, a, a full sub drug and alcohol treatment center, so if somebody needs to come and, and, and be detoxed um, all the way through, uh, you know, the detox process, help, you know, it helps uh, with the painful withdrawals. Um, they see a medical doctor, they get a history and physical, and, uh, and then they meet with traditional uh, group and individual therapy, but we try to, we, we're, we also integrate that with a holistic approach. Okay. So we believe in treating the whole person because yes. addiction really we, we were just we were alluding it to but it affects the um, physical mental emotional and spiritual aspects of a human being There's no doubt yeah and all those aspects need to be treated to treat this person and, and, and restore them to an actual sense of being yeah. being and, and um it, we just have to reflect on that for a second because if you think where the source of pain comes it can come from many different sources that sometimes people as you say will use addiction as a coping mechanism for so let's say it's a back pain i mean i have a family member who died as a result of addiction to opiates because of back pain uh you know maybe it's emotional pain Mm -hmm. um, and people may drink because they've had a horrible experience in life or you know it, I think sometimes too it may not even be the pain we were talking about that at the break how you know that sometimes there's this line you're, you're not really sure where it is but you just start you're having fun and you like you like to drink and next thing you know you just can't quit well no, you know I, I, during the break folks I had said to John and Ellie, I said I love have this love hate deal and I've been had it forever <laughs> uh, with the bulls. No, seriously, because because I know there's a line, you know, because I I grew up around a lot of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. You know, me too. You know, I think every and, family and a lot, has been touched a lot, by you know, this. A lot, just we grew up with a lot of kids, and you know, a lot of them had that problem. And 
as I said to John earlier, this is a sick thing to say, but I always say to someone, hey, if, if you're going to drink, you better not drink too much or you'll never drink again in your life. Because I've seen the line and I know what the line is and then you have one beer and then you're gone. So that's a psychological thing at that particular mm -hmm. point, right? Right. But I try to figure out even myself that you say, okay, so you have some drinks and if you have a couple of drinks, that's fine. But then if you go overboard period, mm -hmm. you know, and we talk about mindful living and being healthy, well, you wake up with poison. You're yeah. poison. Sure. I mean, you're terrible. poison. Sure. And you, you know that it's poison. I mean, yeah. I know it's poison. Right. Okay? It's like, what am I doing? Why, do, why did I just do this to my body? <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So that's a psycho. That's a head trip, man. Yeah. Sure. You know, that's my head trip. But that is definitely, you know... That's a problem. And we, when we spoke about it earlier, too, it's really exciting. I mean, you ever have a p bunch of people sitting around drinking, talking about the drug problem in America? That's the biggest oh, drug problem right oh, that, there. Oh, that's right? heavy. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And, right. It can be a habit. I mean, it, you know, even if it's not just... Uh, I, I, there are many reasons people do it. Man, we could talk about this forever. I know, and I'm sure you I see know. every but, but angle it's, it's, at the recovery center. Right, because we... Because uh, this really gets back to... Are we all alcoholics? Yeah. You know, I mean, it really, sometimes I think about it, I say, well, hold it. You know, why aren't we doing something else? Why are we just going down to the beach? And, you, and, and is, it, is it that ingrown, ingrained into society? Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, you have yeah. a drink. Right. Because you know what I notice? I notice that if I go out to a party, if I go out somewhere, if I have a bottle of water with me at the beginning, I'm, off, I'm fine. <laughs> but if I have a beer... Well, then I'll start drinking beer. But if I have a bottle of water, guess what? If I go through uh, one or two of them, then I'll start drinking water. Yeah. It's, right. It, it, it's kind of, you know, so it's a, uh, you know, a habit. It's like a, it's like a social yeah, habit right. thing. It's like a sure. tick almost. <laughs> sure. Like, why, do you got, why do you have to go to, have a, go to a ball game and have a Budweiser? You I know. know. Why do we, we correlate so much. Oh, it's American. Do. It's football. And it's, you know, but, it, but you're going to get behind the wheel of a car and you right. destroy your life. Right. Yeah. Right. Which makes no sense. I know. Right. I know. And you think about... Um, you know, you can open up any any men's health magazine, and they'll have uh, you know some athletes cure for hangover cure. Well, you know, I mean, how crazy is that? It I, is crazy. A hangover is essentially it's your body withdrawing from alcohol. It's yeah. not right. healthy. It's it's that it's that right. poison. And, right. and we're talking about we'll have you know eight pop tarts and waffles, and and yeah. uh, you know, and, and you'll feel good like it's normal and it's accepted. And it's um, you know, I I think if uh, you've ever in your heart of heart said. I think I drink too much. If you've done that once, you probably have a problem. If you've done it twice, right. you know, sign up. And um, well, that's good. Have, have that's you, good. You know, have you ever, you know, have you ever, um, you know, uh, said to your wife, you know, what, honey, I promise we're going to go to this uh, Christmas party. I'm not. I'm only going to have two drinks. Okay. And I have 22. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. These are. It's, they, this is good information for people because I think so many of us are in denial about where mm -hmm. we are with this, and you know, it's it's interesting. We talked about this with a couple of our guests. You look at people's different perspectives. The Buddhists would say, "Don't drink alcohol at all because you know it clouds your your mental capacity. Right. It, Which you're it not does. Conscious. There's, there's no doubt. One beer. Sure. I, yeah. I, I can. It, I know the difference in one beer even the next morning. It changes right. your sure. perspective, I, and and you know. If you look at the yoga perspective, we're trying to be have good judgment, good discernment, so we make better choices in life. And then we had um, Dr. Brian Clement from Hippocrates on, and he said, you know, no alcohol. It's a poison. It is a poison. But he made a good point, you know, with all the money behind it. There's even studies out there now that say... A glass of wine a day is healthy for you. I know. So, you know, it, I think there's a lot of denial going on out there. So these tips that you're giving, so you say, you know, if you if you say you can have two drinks but you can't, that's a sign. Sign. Um, what else did you say? You said... You know, if you're in your heart of hearts, just think, I have a problem and I can't, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I can't stop or said, I'm going to cut back. You know, there's no cutting back. It crosses right. your mind. Sure, right. sure. I mean, and it's a, it's, it's a really slippery slope, you that know, is. because then you can go, oh, well, look, you know, honey, look, the other night I had a couple and I'm okay. Oh yeah, down, you know. But then ne next weekend, you you know, you're blacked out in the uh, in the uh, front grass, and the neighbors saw, and our kids are embarrassed. Yeah, the blackout and, is a big deal. And it deal. affects families. I mean, there's you know, oh. every lunchroom in America, there's a kid you know eating his soup with his head down because you know he heard his dad you know call his mom on godly names because he was drunk, and, and it just right. affects the whole context of a family. Definitely, you know? that and that's learned behavior for later in life that, mm -hmm. that that we don't even realize. So there's so many repercussions. So when people are coming to the center now, are most people coming on their own accord, just walking through the door? Sure. Yeah, you know what? And usually there's a lot of family intervention, um, you know, uh, or consequences. But most people that they come to our, you know, we don't get a lot of court-ordered people, and it's mostly people that, you know, they really, they just don't want to live like this anymore. And there used to be so much shame regarding addiction in our country. 
you know, the shame is not getting help. I mean, it's accepted. It's, the AMA recognizes that it's disease, so I no, mean, big there's time. help. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to talk more about how Footprint Speech Side Recovery Center is helping people. So stay with us for more Mindful Living. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Life is a mystery to be lived, not a problem to be solved. Mindful Living with Ellie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. Welcome back to Mindful Living. We're here with John Templeton, co-founder of Footprints Beachside Recovery Center. And John, you um, have been talking about, gosh, your experience, your story. You have such good insight on helping someone get through the problem of addiction. So would you tell us more about the center? What, what services do you offer there? You said it is a family a lot of family yeah, it, intervention it, I happening. Mean, you know, addiction is a family disease, and if you know people are are way more predisposed to becoming an addict or an alcoholic if there's a family history of mom, dad, or skips a generation, grandma, grandpa, either side. And uh, I can say the same. The tr same runs true in my family as well. And um, you know, it's no it's no coincidence that my brother uh, Shane, 15 months younger, um, looked up the big brother and followed too closely in my footsteps. But um, and my father. Uh, John Senior, um, you know, we're the three co-founders, and um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yes, it is family-run business. It's family-run business because um, it's it's something that affected us us greatly. It changed our lives, and uh, I think what what really led us to start Footprints was um, when I was going through everything, and my dad was, you know, my support, and and we knew that we had to change our, you know, not only the behaviors of our family but the culture, and and try to really give back. I was giving. I, I can't ever repay what's been given to me in, in my in my life right now, and uh, we wanted to give back and help other families prevent these sort of tragedies. That yes. not necessarily drinking and driving, it, it, including drinking and driving, but I mean overdose deaths. Seven people die every day in Florida from prescription pills, pills right. they were prescribed right. mm -hmm. every day, and. Um, so what we do is we provide everything from a detox to a, a full comprehensive treatment program to help them recover from addiction and never have to go back to that life. And, and, and we treat every aspect of that. We do a lot of individual psychotherapy. But a lot of our therapies, a lot of the ancillary services, which I feel are some of the most important, are the, they help increase the nonverbal communication. Maybe there's forms of trauma that you can't explain and, and even if you just don't feel comfortable even explaining in uh, therapy, so uh, individual psychotherapy, but, th but those traumas can come out in maybe expressive arts therapy mm. 
or even um, yoga. We do a lot of yoga. My wife's actually a yoga teacher, and she comes down and she teaches a minimum twice a week of yoga on the beach, and, it, and it's nice. just... Yoga helps detoxify the, the central nervous system, but also it, it helps everybody. It strengthens ligaments mm -hmm. and it helps restore just that sense of balance that we lacked mm -hmm. in our addictive. Uh, you know, it was a, that's a, I mean that's a crazy lifestyle. That's hard to keep up with that. Yeah. Um, to keep up with the lies, um, you know, the financing to pay for it, and so you know, yoga is really a, a core part of our program that we feel really benefits our clients, and it's, it's and it gets the body moving slowly and it's gentle and yeah. And it restores vitality, that energy that's been lacking and drained. It opens up your energy channels. It restores a sense of well-being. And that's really what we're looking for. Your wife sounds like an amazing yoga teacher. She is. She is. She's my favorite <laughs> yoga teacher, actually. I love her, too. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of ways that um, help um, deepen their experience of uh, 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 of healing yeah and that's what we're looking you mentioned for. meditation as well we do meditation we do a nutrition and yeah we do we try to just slow down those you know become more mindful yeah you know, and and, and yes. become mindful of body sensations you're gonna tell any addict that that you know what just because you checked into treatment you're still gonna have these cravings you're still gonna have these triggers we sure. provide a safe beach tranquil environment that's really conducive to healing and it's right. conducive to treatment and you're immersed in this uh, just wonderful program but um but you're still going to have these cravings and 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 triggers um, and mind being just be mindful of those body sensations in regards to drugs you know be mindful that that is a, a part of the brain that it's craving but we're we're, we're slowly we're, we're changing these behavior patterns creating different pathways of the brain to, and I mean it's just nothing is more rewarding and I get so passionate about when on Christmas when I hear from you know past clients I mean we're a small private you know it's it's very client centered we only have yes. 13 beds so okay. we deal with 13 people at one time and that's so cool yeah when on Christmas when I get text messages or hear people that sure. you know two three four five years of sobriety and it's just uh yeah, and you know what's amazing what you just brought up and it is it's a change it's changing that lifestyle and just changing that behavior and and there's no doubt if you get to feel good Mm -hmm. Then you have the shot of why do I want to feel like this versus I can feel the energy and mm -hmm. I can I can feel good and say uh, and that even you know, I said the battle going back and forth it's always that always always even my own battle because I know I know I know what the difference is yeah. it's like you know why but it's intriguing yeah I mean and, and of course you know. It's it's there, and it's, it's good that you do the you know the comprehensive holistic healing because as you say, you know it helps people be aware of the source of the pain mm -hmm. and or whatever it is. What what are those triggers that is driving that behavior? Sure. Because you know it may take a while to get to that, and this is one of the beautiful things that yoga and meditation asks us to do, and that is to be really self inquisitive and reflective and and sit sometimes with those very dark, deep, scary places within ourselves, but you know, it, it, the only way sometimes, and most of the time, to heal is to reveal. You have to know what, what's driving that behavior. Absolutely. So I love to see that you guys are incorporating um, incorporating those services. You know, in, in a lot of our people, there's a high correlation of trauma, of childhood trauma associated with addiction. So, uh, I, I mean, in, in, you know, everything we do, it's evidence-based. And there's actually evidence-based, there's scientific evidence that proves that yoga and meditation help with PTSD. Uh, we have, you know, veterans that come you know, from with, with just horrible, horrible traumas and, and uh, it, it proves that you know, meditation and yoga actually help with those with trauma resolution and it's, uh, it's amazing and it's just a, one part of a, I believe, to be a comprehensive you know, of course. program. How long have you guys been open now? We've been open since 2008. 2008. And, and yeah, so right. actually this year we, we expanded, so we went from eight beds uh -huh. to uh, we almost doubled but we're, uh, we're at 13 right now. That's and great. Yeah, I mean we treat um, everybody that has, you know, addiction to dual diagnosis. A lot of people have... What, um, is, what is dual diagnosis? Dual diagnosis is, is people that have co-occurring disorders. So okay. um, maybe some form of, uh, you know, mental illness is such a, a dirty word but it's, but so many of Americans suffer from, you know, it's mental illness. There's no shame in saying I have cancer right right but for some reason we don't want to say you know I'm depressed or you know I have bipolar or I have uh, anxiety and and so we actually have you know uh, staff that can, can can treat those you got to treat the addiction first so somebody's always going to act maybe a little manic you know okay, coming sure. off of cocaine right but um 
you know, they may have actual clinical depression, but we, you know, you have to be able to treat both of those because it's very, very common now to have. Is there a lot? Of, is there a lot of cocaine out here now too? Or you know, what is the, there's still yeah, cocaine still yeah, really cocaine yeah. still around, sure. Okay. And there's a lot of, I mean, you know, uh, you know, crack cocaine is is something that it be, okay. it, it provides like an immediate um, right. surge and, okay. and and euphoria. So it's highly addictive and highly it's cheaper addictive. and sure. And I mean, you be you know. You know, we, we get all, everybody that, uh, you'd be surprised that abuses that type of right. drug. I'm just curious. Sure. I know that, you know, of course, the booze is out there. Booze, the is, booze is big. Yeah, right. op opiates are big. Heroin is now making a, a huge comeback, is unfortunately. It? Yeah. So, um, you know, the hypoder hypodermic. You know, her heroin was actually created by bare aspirin uh, as a cure for, for morphine in, in the 1890s. Uh, that's why really? it's called hero he heroin. A female hero. So it was actually, you know, it, it was created by a pharmaceutical company as, you know, it was I'm not to, shocked. to cure to cure no. more, to cure morphine addiction, which was called, known as a soldier's disease. Wow. Yeah. During one of the wars. Probably. Yeah, and it's still it's, over a hundred years. It's still been around, and people have been abusing substances since men first crushed, gr crushed grapes, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so, that makes sense. And yeah. so there's a, uh, but we, but what we know is that there's treatment and it's effective, and and um, I mean, and how, how you be how, better? How long has yoga been around? <laughs> Some say three thousand. Some say <laughs> upwards of five thousand. And it so. still works today. Yeah, yeah. What? I, mm -hmm. Apes might have been doing it too, you know. <laughs> they might have. They might have. You never know. There's some uh, some natural substances out there that send you on a ride. So maybe the animals too. No Who knows? We're no <laughs> all animals. Um, how long is is the is the treatment? Is it different for different people? It is. It, work? it is. You know, we always recommend a minimum of 30 days, and and oh, such yeah. a short I, period of time. I mean, we're looking right. at it was just St. Patrick's Day. It seems like it was just New Year's. That's yes. three months. 30 days is is a really nothing, short yeah. period of time. Um, you know, we encourage, uh, you know, longer treatment is, is every person is individualized, so I can't say across the board, but, yes. um, you know, I, I think a minimum of 30 days where you're just focusing on yourself, focusing on, on your problem and have a plan of action, that right. you're not just going back to that same environment that sets you off and, and really, you know, let's transition smartly. Maybe That's a big deal. It's a big deal. Right? Because what is big the time. percentage of people relapsing is really high. You right? know, um... And I'm not saying it's sure. No, no. A, a center like ours uh, is higher just because there's such a high staff to client ratio, uh -huh. and we are so small. There's not 100 clients. There's 13. Yes. But um, uh, the national average is less than 10 percent of people that actually go to treatment and, and, and are able to, is it? yeah, you know, attain, you know, it's tough. sobriety. Yeah, t attain it's permanent tough. sobriety. It, it's a really, really tough, nasty disease. It's a devastating disease, and it affects everybody from Yale to jail. From Park Avenue to Park Bench yep. and everybody in between. You know? right. It's true. No. So what and what ways are you involved with drunk driving prevention today? You know that's 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 where my um, my passion started. Um, I, I, I'm involved in. Uh, I, I actually speak with Mad. Um, mm. I, I think very highly of some of the women that actually that actually lost you know their their children and it, and it was I, I feel so guilty at first, but um, we've really embraced each other because we're here for the same. You know, same end uh, result, same right. end result, and and so I I I've spoken in my old high school. I just spoke last year, mm. and um, you know I'm I'm really blessed. I feel I'm blessed to have the opportunity to go up and and, and share my story because um you know um, if I could do it, if I could change what happened, I would. Mm -hmm. But um, I, that's not feasible. But um, and so you know it's it's try to make try to prevent these sort of things from happening. I speak at uh, diversion programs, and and really I'll speak whenever asked. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've been really involved. My um, my sentence was a thousand community service hours, and they all had to be speaking. So mm -hmm. I got pretty good at telling my story, and and and, and I think uh, the key is just to be you know authentic and and, uh, and just be open. Yeah, I think young people need to hear this, mm -hmm. and uh, parents need to hear this. You Everyone know, is here. It's it's yeah. no. it's helpful uh, to just to not ignore and to no and to communicate. Sure, sure. I, I think parents should have you know really have an uh, a open door policy with their kids because no matter how good of a relationship or how good your straight A student is, you are not going to be able to prevent them from just being exposed to, to drugs sure. and alcohol. And they may never, you know, put a hypodermic needle in their arm, but I promise you at some point they may be around somebody there's, or, and yes. it, it's really just, uh, you know, there's gotta, there has to be a, you know, a trust factor, but, um, you know. What is the, what is the, the, the parents to children. What is what is the communication? You know, what would be the communication? You know, I, I think. Um, first of all, I, I want to touch on on the p hosting parties where. Well, I want them to drink okay, here. Cool. That way. Okay. 
big no-no. Right. Don't do that. That's enabling right. behavior, and right. that just makes it even even easier. Because you know what? There's a drinking age That's for a awesome. reason. Okay. The young brain is still developing at 18 yes. years old. Right. You know, there's it's 21 for she probably should be older. It's 21 for for a reason, and um, you know, it's not okay. You well, know, great point. You know, great what, point. A great point. You know what? You may have drank. You know, mom and dad, you may have drunk. You know, sipped alcohol underage, but that doesn't mean that it's okay for your child to do it. And yeah, you may have a and particularly sponsor a party. Yeah. Oh, that's right. that, that, that's a big that's no what you're now. doing. I, right. I think I think the thinking there is parents say, oh, they're going to do it anyway, so I'd rather have them do it at my house. No, it, I'm with it, you, it, but uh, I, I, th that that is the thinking. Mm -hmm. but, right. But the fact of the matter is is that the person on the other side that is condoning it the behavior. It still condones it. it probably is. even more enforces it. I if would say you say, so. hey, just drink yeah. at my house. I don't want you to drink and drive. I think that probably says that it's such a conflicting message. I know. I know. I, I, I mean. I'm helping you break the law, and, and not only are you, I, I, I mean, I've, I know of stories and I know families where they've, you know, somebody else had hosted a party and somebody upstairs, you know, a little six, a 16 year old with his whole life ahead of him choked on his own vomit and died. I mean, we, they can't handle alcohol wow. that age. Right. And, and as cool as you want to be and as open as you want to be and liberal and, and hip, like it's just, it's not bad news. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really bad example. What about the parents who, so when their child asks, do you, does, it, does this ever come up? Should I tell them what I've done? Should, like, if my child asks, did you do drugs? Did you drink? Or have you ever had this experience? You know, I don't know if they need to be so open about, about drugs because sometimes we do look like, you know, you know we look at older people that, uh, you know. Or, As examples, or, like you said, sure, you're younger brother to you. Sure, exactly. You know, well, yeah, I did cocaine. My mom did it. And, and it's just, uh, I, I, I think it's okay to be a little honest, but I don't think, um, I think, maybe hiding the truth a little bit. I mean, we're trying to set an example for our kids, you know. Mm -hmm. we're, we, we want them to make better choices than we made because, um, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly saw some examples that, um, you know, that I probably shouldn't have. And, and, but, um, you know, I still made my own, my own choices. And I don't, want, um, I don't want, when I have kids, to make the same. You know, and I'm going to be very open with, with my experience for sure. I'm not going to hide it because, uh, you know, I was almost thinking when my kid... When I have kids, when they're teenagers, I'll sit them all around and tell them my experience and just say it's just not worth it. You know, those three hours that I had fun that night, you know, drinking in a bar, sure. acting like a slob, um, it resulted in so much permanent damage, you know. And not a day goes by where, where I don't think about Julie and, you know, she'd be, she'd be 28 today and what would she be doing with her whole life? And um, mm -hmm. it's just such a, you know, for what? To get a little buzz on. It's just not worth it. Uh, you, her family sounds amazing. And you said that you guys are still in touch. They, yes, we are still in touch. Um, they have a church over in Tampa. Her older sister and and um, you know we've actually teamed up with them and sponsored families for for Christmas. And my my parents have helped you know uh, you know put together and you know we've celebrated you know actually Christmas Eve with them. Believe it or not, I mean it's really amazing. And and it's just the fact that they've just welcomed me and 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 really supported me. And and nothing um, gave me greater satisfaction when you know they told me that I'm they're proud of me and mm -hmm. and and that really. You know that's what I need to keep going. Definitely. Yeah, that's got to good some put some good juice underneath it, right? It does. It yeah. does because um you know like Ali said earlier you know I I don't you know I don't want to just say oh you know I made a mistake I I made a horrible horrible mistake and I and I need to own that but I'm really trying to do everything I can today to try to you know help and be a positive influence in other people's lives because there was a lot of people that pulled me out of the pit. Sure. And now at my center I get to do that and help other people and help other young guys that that may have lost up and women that may have lost that hope. And it's out there. I mean, life, you know, you can, you can recover from this disease of addiction and have a wonderful, fantastic life. The, the, let's pitch up folks listening out there right now, whether they have a problem, their kids have a problem, they think they have a problem, right? Is this something that is covered with insurance, is not covered with insurance? How does this work? You know, it is covered with insurance, and actually with uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, it's actually helped people with um, any sort of, uh, you know, mental illness or substance abuse. So, That's great. Yeah. That's I, great. And, you know, and, and if somebody, I mean, if you're, you can bring a horse to water and not make them drink, right. but try to make them thirsty. You know, right. so if you have a family member that is suffering and you know it, don't stand aside. Don't worry about hurting their feelings because you're gonna, yes. you know, you don't want to close the casket for them. And, and right. you know, reach out and, and do what you can. And you know, I mean, I invite anybody to call our center if they have somebody you know that's that's suffering or, or that needs help. And mm -hmm. um, you know, or call any center sure. right? because there's a lot of help out there. Yeah, they accept insurance. We accept insurance, and, and mm -hmm. it's um. That's big because yeah. that's, that, that means that everyone can get help. Yeah, you and know. if you're listening to us on the radio right now on 1340 Tantalk here in Tampa, the number to call is 877-954-3908. And again, you can always visit the website footprintsbeachside.com so I think so, that, that is a beautiful... Where did you get the name Footprints? You know, it, it evolved um, 
from the, the poem Footprints in the Sand. That's yes. beautiful. I love that. I love yeah. that. And, 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 you, know, you don't need to be religious to come to treatment, but I know, but you know, that's beautiful. It is because I think everybody we can all we've all felt that way. You know, I've you know. I only saw one set of footprints. I was, you know, you know, where were you? Whoever, you know, whatever you are, power greater than you, God, whoever, you know. And, it's uh, awesome. No, it's, and, it's and real. And I can relate to that. And, and you know, it, it's so amazing how how we evolved. Um, my dad was in title insurance for 30 years, and I was fortunate enough to follow in the footsteps yes. and have a business when uh, go into that business with him after I got out of jail and trying to restore my life. And um, uh, but I had a, a, my one of my best friends died of an overdose shortly after I got out of jail. Oh. And um, and then one of the title. Uh, you know, one door closes, another one opens. Sure. So this title insurance office in Treasure Island, the market went to, you know what? Yeah. And so we had this beautiful space, and we just met a counselor. So we just started doing, you know, outpatient that, therapy. That's you know, how it started that's how organically. It yeah, I got so we it. thought, oh, you know, this is terrible. One of the offices closed, and right. little did we know that there was a bigger plan. Divine Much intervention. Bigger. Divine intervention, sure. Right. And so it's and it's a block. I mean, you can see the beach from the from the office, so it's just that's such a beautiful. Great. I go to the beach, and I go paddle boarding with clients. Talk, right. That is yeah. so healing in and of itself, just to put your feet in the water, or smell the Absolutely. air, feel the breeze. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's therapeutic. It's healing. Yeah, it is. No, you know? it definitely is, right? such an amazing story and we're so grateful that you're here to share it. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, I appreciate it and, and you know, I want everybody out there to know that, you know, that there is help and there's no shame in saying I have a problem. You know, the shame is 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 not. Well, you know what's really cool too is that if you have a problem or you think you have a problem, talking with someone like you as someone who's professional in the field. Right. Those I they're not tricks, but it was like you need tricks to 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 Trick your mind, trick your body that you're not going to do it, right? I mean, do you know what I mean? Sure, I don't sure. know if that's the right word, but the fact of the matter is, is that that change of behavior has to take place, and how does it do it? You know, and that's where you come up with the plan. Do you get those calls just from people who say, "Hey, I, I need someone to talk to"? They, they're not sure they're coming in, and they're all the time. Yeah. All so the and time. so you have people who can take those calls. Yeah, I, I take the calls. Oh. You know, oh, yeah, nice. we have we have yeah. staff members that take the calls. Um, you know, we have a very very. Uh, dynamic, but you know, professional staff that's 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 skilled in this. And and you know, the one of the biggest misconceptions is you know he's got more willpower. He should know better. Or I'll have a lot of willpower. I'll be able to quit on your own. And and you know, addiction is not about willpower. In fact, it right. it, it hijacks the part of the brain that motivates uh, the prime need for survival. So and instead of saying like let's wow. get up and go that's to work. Intense. You know the prime desire and the, the biological aspect is like you know the, that instead of saying get up go to work love your family go to sleep it's get the drug get the drug get the drug it, and it's so overpowering and so overwhelming that unless you've gone through that a lot of people don't have compassion for people that that have addiction so you know let's right. be more compassionate and and, and and let's love people in the treatment let's get right. let's get them better let's get them it's diseases without ease let's get them better and well let's yeah. get them healed it's such an important point you make because uh, some people are past that point of the choice. Mm -hmm. So again, I just want to thank you so much, John. And w I'd like to dedicate this show to the work that you're doing and to Julie. I appreciate and that. And for anyone who needs more information or who just has questions concerned about yourself or loved ones, call Footprints 1-877-954-3908. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And be back with us next week for more Mindful Living. Be well. Namaste. 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 That was awesome, man. <laughs> You're watching Tiger TV.